morning students welcome to sharachandra ias academy daily current affairs analysis 21st april 2022 <coughs> so for today we are going to discuss the topics of norms for quota in promotions state sponsor of terrorism designation by usa third topic how the rebels in mn fourth about semicon india 2022 conference details of vidya samiksha kendra okay let us start the first topic that is norms for quota in promotion okay this is about the reservation in government posts reservation in central government posts according to the article 16 if you see article 15 and article 16 in our fundamental rights so article 15 and article 16 in the fundamental rights so they empower so so the they empower the state to provide the special special safeguards for weaker sections of the society so article 15 and particularly 16 will provide the special safeguards in case of public employment 15 in safeguards in general safeguards in general for weaker sections 16 specially talks about the public employment okay so here this art, this particular news is more about the article 16 so article 16 says that so the person cannot be discriminated in case of public employment opportunity so based on the race religion caste gender or place of birth but however at the same time article 16 says that government can also provide certain safeguards to the weaker sections of the society in case of the public employment so accordingly the reservations are being implemented in the country so we all know that the reservations are there in the case of public employment at the entry level okay at the entry level there are reservations in public employment But now the question is about the reservation in promotions okay so not at the entry level in promotions so the reservations in promotions so here today we are going to discuss about this particular uh, concept of reservation in promotions so so if you see the context today so the department of personal and training the department of personal and training uh, as uh, requesting all the departments to collect the data to collect the data about inadequacy of representation why this concept of inadequacy of the representation because i am going to tell you very very important point very very important point that is do remember even though the reservations or even though the reservations are given in india given in india based on the based okay in public employment based on article 16 which is a fundamental right okay article 16 is a fundamental right right against discrimination in case of public employment so it is a fundamental right but reservations are not fundamental right do remember this point very very important point very very important point reservations reservations does not come under the fundamental rights okay the reservations are not the fundamental rights okay you cannot claim reservation as a fundamental right reservation is depends upon the inadequacy of the representation in the opinion of the state if state opinions or in the opinion of the state if there is inadequacy of representation of scs and sts then only it will provide the reservation if in the opinion of the state there is adequate representation of scs and sts in public employment then reservation can be discontinued so whether whether a person belong to sc or st or any other uh, weaker section he cannot claim the reservation as a fundamental right because the condition the condition for the reservation is inadequacy of the representation right in the opinion of the state so <coughs> yeah so it is the same time so department of personal and training so lays the lays forth the parameters that must be completed in case of promotions we will see what are the requirements actually what are the conditions to be met yeah you see uh, see supreme court we will discuss the timeline we will discuss the timeline how this concept of promotion uh, reservation in promotions uh, came out in india uh, but before that uh, see these these are the requirements 
to be fulfilled in order to provide the pro reserva reservation information that is information good amount of information must be there to say that there is insufficient representation of scs and sts in case of that particular cadre whether it is above uh, above certain level group a cadre uh, group a cadre or group b cadre or whether it is any cadre it the quant good amount of information must be there to say that scs and sts are insufficiently represented okay so each and every this is applied to each and every cadre independently and each and every at the rank level independently at the cadre level independently right so it depends upon the roster roster we can see that now how yeah these are the developments in india so from the beginning how the uh, concept of reservation in the promotions came in india if you see the timeline so in the first very uh, indra sani judgment of 1992 supreme court said that uh, the article 164 that the, about which we are discussing right now that is the reservation in case of public employment and article 64 says that there must not be any discrimination article 16 says that there must not be any discrimination in case of public employment and uh, at the same time it is saying that reservation can be provided for the weaker sections so it said that court held that the constitution does not provide for the reservation in case of promotions in this judgment okay and it is also very famously it is known as mandal judgment okay so in 1992 in indira Ga indira sani case uh, which is famously known as mandal judgment court said that there is no concept of reservation in promotions but however as a response to this judgment constitution parliament amended the constitution in 1995 Okay, there was a constitutional amendment made in 1995, 77th constitutional amendment in response to this. So court said that there is no promotions in reserve, no reservation in case of promotions. So what the parliament did is parliament added a new, new point, new provision to Article 16. That is, Article 16, 4A, a sub clause was added to the Article 16, saying that the reservations can be pro. in uh, reservations can be provided in case of promotions for scs and sts okay so this is exactly the constitutional amendment of 77th constitutional amendment is exactly opposite to the judgment given in uh, by the supreme court in mandal case or indira sani case next uh, at the same time it uh, after 6 years that is in 2001 parliament passed one more constitutional amendment bill that is 85th constitutional amendment act saying that to provide the consequential seniority consequential seniority means uh, for example if the same in the same cadre if the in the same cadre for example all of these four candidates belong to same cadre if this particular person belong to the reserve category even though he is not senior than other three even though there are other seniors than him he can be promoted he can be promoted by taking into consideration of the consequential seniority okay so that is case means the seniors who belong who does not belong to reserve category can be kept aside can be kept aside and this particular reserved category person can be given the promotion so that is how the consequential seniority came next these two constitutional amendments that is 77th and 85th 77th and 85th constitutional amendments together provided for the reservation in promotions as well as the concept of consequential seniority for scs and sts now these two judgments were challenged in in the court obviously but by some general category employees okay now <clears throat> this particular case is mostly uh, famously known as m nagaraj versus union of india okay so this both uh, constitution amendments that is 77th and 85th constitution amendment acts were challenged in the supreme court saying that they are violating their fundamental rights and uh, supreme court upheld the means finally what happened is the it means all the cases regarding the reservations were taken uh, unto un under this case and finally the judgment was given by the supreme court saying that the parliament's decision that is these two constitution amendments that is 77th and 85th are valid okay are valid it, it is upheld okay upheld the parliament decisions to expand the reservations for scst to include the promotions in this judgment right 
So reservation in promotion has been upheld by the Supreme Court. So on one hand, Parliament enacted the constitutional amendments, and Supreme Court also upheld such constitutional amendments. So the reservation in promotion is now legally valid in India. Now, but but at the same time, Supreme Court laid down some conditions. That is three standards. Three standards that the state must meet. Three conditions are there. Let us see what are those three conditions in order to implement the reservations in promotions. The first condition: if a class is there, that is whether it is SC or ST or any other particular class, then the state must demonstrate. The state must demonstrate. State in the sense it is not uh, like uh, AP state or Telangana state. The state in the sense is the government here. Okay, so the government must demonstrate. The Indian government must demonstrate. Uh, or the state government must demonstrate the class backwardness that means government has to prove government must have enough proofs okay enough uh, data and enough proofs to say that this particular class is a backward class okay and the second is second is it must have considerable amount of data to say that this particular class which is regarded as a backward class is underrepresented in that particular position okay for example in any particular de department if uh, he is uh, he is being promoted to the assistant engineer to the assistant division engineer or then to division engineer okay like that or sub, sub inspector to inspector okay so like that if suppose this is one cadre this is other cadre so the, the the state must prove that the state must have adequate data saying that this particular class whether it is sc or st is underrepresented in ad cadre so this year promotions can be held year promotions can be given if suppose this underrepresentation is not proved by the state then the reservations cannot be provided so such was the condition laid down by the court and finally <clears throat> it must demonstrate that the reservations will have no impact on overall efficiency yes so it is so the reservations can be provided but at the same time the efficiency cannot be compromised okay without compromising the efficiency reservations have to be provided because sometimes uh, means it is said that if you provide reservation in promotion sometimes uh, a person may not have complete experience or complete uh, he, can, he can before gaining the complete experience about one particular cadre he may get promoted to the next particular uh, next uh, higher levels next uh, next level in the hierarchy so uh, this may affect the efficiency of the administration so that is the reason why uh, court uh, said that okay without compromising the efficiency of administration of that particular department reservations have to be provided but <coughs> but so these are the three conditions laid down by the supreme court in nagaraj case okay so as of now we are seeing we are discussing about this nagaraj case right so m nagaraj versus union of india 2006 case okay so in this case court upheld the 77th and 85th constitution amendment so court gave permissions for reservations and promotion but however court laid three conditions that is class backwardness must be proved under representation must be proved efficiency cannot be compromised these are the three conditions but in 2019 sorry 2018 in jernel singh case again this is very important decision jernel singh case it said that backwardness of sc ST is ca uh, proving proving the backwardness of sc ST is not necessary okay so <coughs> the backwardness of scs and sts have to be proven so that was the condition laid down by the supreme court supreme court laid down one condition that the backwardness of that particular class has to be proven in order to provide reservation but here in general singh case it said that the backwardness of scs and sts need not to be proved need not to be proved as uh, okay so that was the decision given by supreme court so the first condition has been removed in the case of scs and sts now supreme court again ruled in january 22 so recently that data must be collected to determine the inadequacy that is second case under representation second condition is there no so in nagaraj case three conditions were laid out out of which first condition has been ruled out there so there is no need for the uh, proof of backwardness in case of sc statistics the second condition is valid that is under representation 
has to be proven by some collected data so that's the reason why supreme court said that in january 22 data must be collected to determine the inadequacy of the scs and sts in government employment so before reservations has to be provided but at the same time the court determined that the in order to collect this measurable data in order to collect uh, this measurable data uh, cadre must be taken into class group and entire service not the class okay it said that cadre, group and entire service must be taken into consideration. Right, and at the same time, uh, it also delegated uh, it delegated the states, okay, at uh, the same central government, state government as well as central government to determine the inadequacy of SCST representation in the promotions, right. So, finally, if, what are the implications of these rules? So now central secretariat service employees who have not been promoted in the last six years are expected to get the uh, promotions after uh, once this particular data is collected and uh, government proves the inadequate representation of SCS and STs. So a lot of officials who are awaiting the promotions will get benefit. Okay, so that is how they they can be. Uh, I mean that is how SCS and STs can be represented in higher positions of the government as well right so this is all about these uh, promotions in case of uh, means promotions with reservations right now going to the second topic of the day state sponsor of terrorism designation by us here the ukraine okay here the ukraine is requesting the usa is requesting the usa to to designate the russia as a state sponsor of terrorism Okay, so Russia be designated as a state which sponsors the terrorism, which supports the terrorism. Okay, by the America. So it is Ukraine is requesting USA to recognize Russia as a supporter of terrorism. Okay, why? Because this is most severe set of sanctions against Russia that the US has available. But Ukraine is requesting US is US has to consider whether to accept this request or not. Because as of now, US uh, recognized Syria, Iran, North Korea and Cuba, these four countries as the countries which support the terrorism, okay, list of the state sponsors of terrorism, I mean, they sponsor either uh, money or weapons or whatever the intelligence support or whatever uh, they will support, they will uh, provide to the terrorist organizations. So these are the four countries, Syria, Iran, North Korea and Cuba. So US says that these four countries are the sponsors of terrorism so that's the reason why they are kept in the so the once it is uh, recognized then the strict sanctions are uh, laid down on these particular countries okay so who will have the power to designate a country as a state sponsor means it is u.s secretary so the u.s secretary of the state has the authority to designate which country is the uh, state sponsor of terrorism and so on and uh, providing assistance for the act of international terrorism right so what happens once a country is designated as the state sponsor of terrorism then there first of all usa to so restriction on the usa will be stopped sorry restrictions are kept on the usa to the countries and at the same time defense exports and sales are completely prohibited dual use commodities like uh, which which the commodities which are used for both defense purpose and civil purpose are also subject to several restrictions and uh, various financial and other constraints that means loans will not be given from IMF or World Bank or uh, other banks and they will not uh, so most probably their trade will get affected so at the same time not only on those countries so if suppose a country is designated if Syria is designated as a uh, terrorist sponsor state then US can impose the restrictions on other countries which are doing business with Syria so that is sanctions can be imposed on countries and individuals that do specific type of trade with the designated countries so the designated countries are the one who are sponsoring the terrorism so other countries who are doing with the business with designated countries can also be uh, can also face some sanctions from the US okay so <coughs> For example, and uh, once the country is designated as a state sponsor, US will confiscate okay all the country's assets in USA. Means if in USA on the territory of USA, if that particular country has any uh, property, whether it is real estate or whatever, then that will be completely frozen. 
and at the same time us can veto all said uh, loans from imf or world bank to that particular country and uh, dual use exports that is uh, both civil and military use can be done by some products so that will be completely wide range restrictions will be imposed and economic sanctions were also taken and the action against the countries which are doing business with designated countries right and at the same time there is provision for the removal also once if it is uh, recognized or once it like it is for example a country stops a country stops supporting to the uh, terrorism and uh, okay and now conforming with the international law it is if your country is following the international law and not supporting the terrorism then us will take it out of the list of the state sponsor of terrorism as of now us removed sudan iraq south yemen from the list okay earlier these three were also in the list of state sponsors now they these three countries have been removed okay yeah. this is all about state sponsor of terrorism so ukraine is requesting the usa to recognize russia as the state sponsor once it is recognized then russia us can impose severe restrictions on other countries who are doing trade you all know that india india is also doing trade so in yesterday's discussion in day before yesterday's discussion we were discussing about s400 okay s400 which we are buying uh, from the russia and we are continuously engaging in trade with russia we are buying energy from the russia so but us is uh, against means us is requesting india not to do so but however we are doing that at our national interest so if suppose this uh, recognition that is uh, state sponsor terrorism is given to the russia then us may impose some sanctions on india as well okay so because as we are in, in uh, actively in engagement with the russia now coming to the third topic that is how the rebels in yemen if you see uh, if you see once uh, we have to look at on the map of yemen so this is the map of yemen okay the earlier the capital city sana eden so these are the major cities sada sana marib Tides, Aden. If you see, there is a small, small uh, water body between Horn of Africa and Yemen. Okay, so this is a small trait. Okay, this is a trait between these. And we all know that the all the oil, okay, oil tanks from the Arabian Sea enter into the Red Sea. Okay, through these small trait. So that's the reason why there is a strategic importance to the Yemen. so yemen is a bordering country of this strait a narrow strait uh, uh, through which majority of the oil exports will be done so that's the reason why the security and safety of this particular area is very important in the, uh, for the international good right so <coughs> coming back to the topic the context is the houthi rebels in yemen they want to take one humanitarian action that is they want to remove the children children from their ranks that means you know that they are uh, very soldiers who are less than the um, less than 14 years age less than 18 years age who are con- who are regarded as a children so these children are now how the rebels are promising that the ch- child soldiers child soldiers will be eliminated will be removed from this uh, from their cadres okay so they started an exhibition uh, action plan so so to avoid the death and maiming of the children as well as and they also said that uh, they will not kill the children or they will not maim children and at the same time the attacks will not be done on schools and hospitals right so so within 6 months they are targeting to remove to do this action so it is expected that over 10000 children have been murdered and maimed as a result of war so yeah one of the s- defined violations if you see the violations on children uh, child rights have been violated how d- during the time of war what are considered as violations particularly recruitment and use of children in war killing and maiming children using them uh, for sexual violence and uh, child abductions attacks on schools and hospitals denial of humanitarian access to the children all these comes under the violation of child rights okay so recruiting them as a soldiers killing them maiming them uh, using them for sexual violence uh, abduction abducting them attacking on schools 
or hospitals and deny uh, deny denying their uh, humanitarian assistance like food or health okay all these comes under the violation of the child rights <coughs> okay so it is well known that the immense conflict immense conflict between shias and uh, uh, other groups have started way back in 2014 when the so these how these occupied the capital city of sana so this is the capital city sana is the capital of mn at that point of time so this uh, yeah how these were supported by iran you have to know this how these were supported by iran the expelled government was supported by saudi okay it is like uh, it, there was a 40 years it is 40 years conflict between saudi and iran okay saudi and iran it is like sunni block versus shia block so if you see like this that the saudi sub, he supports the expelled government in mn whereas iran supports the houthis so it is a conflict between saudis and iran saudi arabia and iran but mn became the victim mn became the victim in the hands of uh, this conflict so it uh, that is how uh, all these were supported by iran and the expelled government is supported by saudi so they want to remove the uh, uh, saudi arabia is trying to remove or to, to control the houthis and reestablish the expelled government so accordingly uh, there were several killings like 14500 if you see the data 14500 civilians were and 150000 combatants were killed okay it is the world's worst humanitarian catastrophe it is regarded because already seven seven years have been completed till now the conflict is still continuing okay so <coughs> what who are these houthis and what is their target and all so if you see the houthis are nothing but the jaidi shiites as i said it is a war between shia and sunnis because sunnis are supported by saudi arabia shias and supported are supported by iran so these houthis receive their complete support from iran it is a shia minority group in the islamic world uh, so they are uh, zaidis they mean these houthis are zaidis they are subset of shia they believe that uh, who govern iraq so diff- diff- little difference is there between the iran iraq governments and these particular houthis but elsewhere they are against the us particularly they are against the us they are against israel they are against jews and they want the victory of islam so their famous slogan was god is great death to us death to israel curse the jews and uh, victory for islam so right so uh, this is what their propaganda and coming to some uh, information about the mn as i already shown you mn borders the uh, saudi arabia and oman and uh, in arabian peninsula if you see uh, so this yeah this is very important 30 km this is just 30 km of strait is there that the strait name is bab al mandab strait okay water body between mn on one side mn on one side and africa that is horn of africa on other side so this small water body this small water body that is strait that is known as babal mandab strait so this is very important because of the lot of global oil tanks will move and it is also known as gate of tears okay so yeah the one uh, if you see one fact where is this is more is maybe important for prelims because earlier both mn and horn of africa belongs to the same continent that means there is no water body in between okay that is 18 million years ago the both horn of africa and mn belongs to the same continent okay same continent but because of this rift in between okay the rifting of gulf of aden on the other hand separated the arabian peninsula from the horn of africa now mn's capital is sana as i said this is completely in the control of houthis now okay so this sana has been designated as a unesco world heritage site why because of multi story buildings with a, a beautiful multi story buildings you can see uh, see if you yeah so see. these are the beautiful multi story buildings in sana okay that is why it is recognized as the uno world heritage site 
So this, uh, as of now, this uh, is, as a sadhana is completely under the control of Houthis. So present government has been relocate, relocated to Eden. Right. So it is uh, operating from Eden now, the government. Now coming to the, uh, what about this uh, Indian concern? We have to, so okay, they have some conflict then. Now uh, how far India is concerned about that? So that we have to see. If you see the Indian interests in particular, okay, coming to the Indian interest. For India, it is uh, obviously India is against against the wars. We are a peace-loving country, so we are against the war. We condemned several times the activities of either Houthi or the support of Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia, the covert support given by Iran and Saudi Arabia to the uh, warring groups, and uh, we condemn the terroristic activities of all. Uh, so all the time we are in support of the humanitarian grounds. So it is a challenge again uh, to the India because. Uh, we have almost 8 million because it is about oil security on one side because it is a bordering country to the Babal Mandap Strait because most of our oil imports come from the Babal Mandap Strait. Uh, strait. Uh, so and at the same time there are uh, 8 million almost like 8 million uh, expat means uh, diaspora is there yet me and diaspora that means indians are living uh, in this region and uh, 80 billion dollars annually we receive 80 billion dollars of uh, remittances remittances means the amount which was which is sent by the indians who are earning in foreign countries 80 billion us dollars remittances being received annually so that's why it is a the conflict disturbed Indian economy on one side okay, because and at the same time we conducted Operation Rahat. Okay, what is Operation Rahat? Operation Rahat is a massive air and sea operation to evacuate almost 4,000 Indian nationals from uh, MN. In 2015 we have we conducted Operation Rahat to evacuate 4,000. So that is again uh, burden to India and uh, we are providing humanitarian assistance also like food and medical aid was given to MN okay medical treatment was given uh, to many MNE nationals in the past few years so we are continue we continue to facilitate education for large number of MNE nationals in various Indian institutions so on one side India is uh, even though India is losing the remittances because of these conflicts but on the other side India is providing the humanitarian assistance to the MNE nationals right <laughs> moving to the next topic that is about <coughs> semicon India 2022 conference so this is more important for the prelims not only for prelims means also because the semicon semicon in the sense this is semiconductor we have to remember the semiconductor uh, india 2022 conference is being held in bangalore okay so in april may 29th of april to 1st may uh, under the ministry of electronics and information this is completely factual but i'll explain what is the importance of semiconductors uh, electronic and information technology so this ministry is organizing a conference on semiconductors Okay, manufacturing in India. So, how to making how to make India a semiconductor nation? Okay. So, that is the topic is design and manufacture in India for the world. Making India a semiconductor nation. The goal is to make India a major role in the global semiconductor value chain. But, however, we will see the importance of this uh, semiconductor and all uh, because uh, this is even important for man uh, mains also. If you see uh, most of the uh, today's uh, combustion engines, combustion engines and many uh, appliances, 40% of the combustion in, uh, engine car uh, is made of semiconductor chip, electronic parts. Okay, because the day to day, the day by day, the electronic, the ro the electronic gadgets in our day to day life are being increased, and we know that all the electronic gadgets are made of semiconductor chips. So almost. Uh, 
before earlier it was very less uh, less than 20 percent a decade ago now it uh, increased to 40 percent so semiconductor chips uh, are used in a bulky way to result for this increase so with the bulk of semiconductor manufacturing uh, other countries like uh, taiwan uh, south korea usa japan and even china recently china also joined to the list of the major uh, contributors in the semiconductor field so semiconductors are majorly uh, developed and manufactured by taiwan south korea usa japan and recently china also joined this group uh, so india being one of the countries uh, to recently give recognition to this uh, semiconductor importance uh, it is in initiated we have initiated a mission that is semiconductor mission semiconductor mission this semiconductor mission to man to develop and to help for the manufacturing of this semiconductor chips in india so <coughs> uh, if you see what is this semiconductor chip uh, what are the semiconductors which material is used in manufacturing these means mostly silicon and germanium okay or gallium arsenide cadmium okay silicon uh, germanium gallium arsenide or uh, like uh, cadmium cd cadmium selenide so all these are used in means anyone the, any one of any few materials are used in manufacturing uh, so they are the basic building blocks that serve the uh, modern electronics okay so once semiconductor chips are made then we can modern electronic goods will run on these semiconductor chips these chips are now integral part of the automobiles uh, gadgets medical devices so many machines many medical devices like ecg uh, and uh, automobiles uh, combustion engines household gadgets each and every gadget like whether it is phone or mobile phone or whatever the electronic good we use all consists of the uh, these chips so there was a lot of demand increase in the demand uh, particularly during the time of covid 19 pandemic the demand has increased highlighting the centrality of chip powered computers okay so <coughs> But at the same time, on the other side, see, this lockdown, COVID-19 lockdown on one side increased the demand and on the other side decreased the supply. Okay, increased the demand and decreased the supply because of the uh, shutdown of the industries or uh, because of uh, non, means shutdown of the transport and all. So that's the reason why these, both these effects created a shortage. Okay, shortage, increase of demand, decrease of the supply created a lot of shortage. So that's why India's semiconductor demand uh, increased a lot and uh, related initiatives like india almost currently uh, it is india imports like 100 billion worth 100 billion dollar worth of chips okay it is uh, estimated that india will uh, in, uh, import these mean these much value of uh, imports by the year of 2025 so that's the reason why union cabinet had allocated good amount of money like around uh, 76000 crores for supporting the development of semiconductors and manufacture the semiconductors even though we have to welcome this acknowledgement so india also launched a scheme known as specs india launched a scheme known as specs scheme for promotion of manufacturing of electronic components and semiconductors promotion scheme for promotion of manufacturing electronic components and semiconductors okay but however there are a lot of challenges like uh, high investments are being required mm, the support of government I mean, economic support of the government was uh, not up to the level and uh, extremely expensive setup is required so some resource inefficient sectors are there so but any, anyways we have to overcome all these difficulties and we have to make india as a semiconductor hub making a india semiconductor nation so that's what this uh, uh, conference is all about right okay moving on to the next topic of vidya samiksha kendra this is a purely factual thing uh, that is in gujarat in gujarat government gujarat education uh, department has established this vidya samiksha kendra that is nothing but a command and control center okay it is a command and control center established, uh, started in gandhinagar okay what is the function of this means all the enrollment attendance outcomes learning outcomes dropouts learning outcomes means uh, means marks and all okay of the uh, 
uh, students marks uh, annual marks or midterm marks like that or uh, dropouts school accreditation and school teachers school teacher block and cluster resources centers coordinators are all monitored through this center okay this center will have all the data national digital education architecture framework okay underpins this cutting edge data driven center so it is completely a data driven center it will collect the data the center will have all the data about enrollment attendance outcomes dropouts okay so number of schools teachers blocks and clusters so complete data driven center so it will have all the data and it will have command and control of all the uh, over the complete educational system in the state so that is how gujarat education department uh, launched this uh, particular command and control center so that is known as vidya samiksha kendra in gandhagar what is the goal of this center is used to take data and technology to improve the learning outcomes right so specifically the government will have all the data in order to frame the educational policy so state educational policy can be framed uh, based keeping this particular data in mind okay the total uh, data regarding the state and enrollment everything will be in the hands so this will be a very good initiative which has to be promoted in all the states for the betterment of the education system in india okay. this is all for today thank you